Welcome to the Iron Will Podcast, where we talk about overcoming adversity and challenges, creating the life we truly want, and how we use iron therapy to improve our mind and body. No matter what life throws at us, we need to develop an iron will to push through whatever stands in the way to becoming the very best version of ourselves. It's never too late, but now is the time for action. Welcome to episode 211 of the Iron Will Podcast. There is only one place to look for approval. When we're trying to uh, make ourselves better, heal ourselves, bring ourselves to a point where we can truly create the life that we really want for ourselves, to become the person we really want to become inside and out, we're going to look for ways to measure our progress. When we're In a weakened spot, when we're not strong, when our self-esteem is low, we're going to spend a lot of time looking outward for approval. We see it on Facebook all the time. We see it on social media. We have those friends that always seem to be desperately seeking our approval, the approval of others. They spend their time doing things that they think other people will appreciate or or find them in the way or in the light that they want to be seen. And the real truth of it is that there's very few people whose approval we should be seeking. When we're younger, it's different. It's our parents, it's our mentors, it's our coaches, because we're still trying to develop. We're still trying to figure ourselves out. We're still trying to determine our identity. So we have to look on the outside because we don't have a lot of inside experience yet. So I think that's important. But as we get older, we need to really understand that the only place that we need to seek approval is from within ourselves. Because in our heads, in our minds, in our souls, we have all the facts. We know all the things we've done, good and bad. We've known, we, have, we know what we failed to do. We know what we wish we could do. We have all the information. Problem is we're tied up with the emotions behind that as well. But at the end of the day, we need to really work on setting and holding ourselves to higher personal standards. And that's hard. That's hard because it's one-on-one. We're always with ourselves. We never get a break from ourselves. So we can't hide. We try to hide. We try to keep ourselves busy. We fill our, our minds with other things. We find ways to occupy our attention, to take our mind off what's truly going on inside. We're maybe masking some hurt. Maybe you're stuck in old ways of thinking, negative ways of thinking. We don't know how sometimes to think differently. That's That's a learned skill. It's an acquired skill. It all comes back to working on ourselves. Sitting there and spending time with yourself. It's hard because quite often we don't like ourselves. We don't like who we are. We want to, but we don't. Who wants to spend time with someone or somewhere in some place that we don't enjoy, that we don't want to be a part of? At the end of the day, it's really important that we really work on ourselves to make us the coolest person we know hold ourselves to that standard that's important to us, how we look, how we feel, how we handle situations. But it's based on us, the inside. Who do we want to be? Who do we truly want to be? And what are we ready to do to get there? And that's really the magic. That's really that epiphany that we have to get to. And we don't get there unless we start to look inward unless we start to really start to break things down and look at what's good, what's bad, what's ugly. Hard to do, but it has to be done. It's the only way we're gonna move forward. It's the only way we're gonna sit there. We talked a few episodes about uh, ago about treating our life like we're a master in an art form. And making ourselves the ultimate project. 
when we start to do this and we start to make those changes and we start to become the person we want to be, everything around us begins to change. As we raise our internal standards on ourselves, our outward standards will improve. What you're willing to accept and not accept starts changing because of the reality that you're changing for yourself. You don't want people to talk, talk badly to you. You don't want to be disrespected. Stop disrespecting yourself. Because the moment you stop disrespecting yourself, the moment you start holding yourself to a higher accountable, the moment you start loving yourself, that permeates around you. That flows out from you. And that starts telling the world around you, don't talk to me that way. I won't tolerate it for myself. I certainly won't tolerate it from you. Don't treat me that way. Because I will not be treated that way by myself or anyone else. If I hold myself in a much higher regard and higher level of respect, I also will start to hold people that are dear to me and important to me at a higher level of regard and a higher level of respect because it becomes our baseline for communicating, communicating with ourselves, communicating with the outside world. We've all run into that person who really, really does have their shit together. And having your shit together doesn't mean you're a millionaire, doesn't mean you drive the best cars, doesn't mean you take 10 trips a year. It does if that's what's important to you, if you have your shit together. But the person who has their shit together is the person that's not afraid to speak their mind when it's time to speak their mind, not afraid to go about and do their thing, irregardless of who's doing it with them, who's hanging out with them, who's seeing them do it. Because we're on a mission. We're, see, we're fulfilling a life of purpose. We have things to do, and it doesn't matter what's going on around us. If something is affecting us, we will deal with it because we've set higher standards for ourselves. We all want that. We all want to live a higher quality of life. We all want to have fulfilling jobs, careers, or businesses. We all want to have passion-filled endeavors. We all want to do the things we love doing. We want to be happy doing that. We want to be loved. We want to feel needed, appreciated. Those are very powerful things, and those things are meaningful. But for them to be truly meaningful, we have to set that for ourselves. We have to do the hard work, the reflection, the writing, the crying, the workouts, the eating better, the reading, the discipline, getting up on time, going to bed on time, doing the things that need to get done on a daily basis, doing the tough things when tough things have to be done, facing those things. Enjoying the moment when things are good. Enjoying the moment, period. Live in the present. These are the things that we need to get to. But it's not easy. If it was, like I like to say everything else when it comes to training and nutrition, if it was easy, everyone would have abs and no one would ever wear a shirt again. Right? So at the end of the day, we are dealing with record levels of people with... Anxiety, depression, PTSD. And for the people going through it, it is very real. But I believe the solution is really within ourselves. Dealing with these things. And if we can't deal with it alone, find someone to help us deal with it. Go to therapy. Talk to somebody. Join a group. But start creating patterns and rituals they're going to manifest the things that you want. Sitting there and just hoping it's going to happen isn't going to work because it hasn't worked. Because if it had, we'd all be phenomenal. We'd all be great. The things we do when no one is looking, what we do, our structure, structure of our days, of our weeks, our months, what we hold important, whatever we truly hold important, we will always find time and the resources for. What we don't, we'll find excuses for. And then we'll come back with regret and anger. And when we're angry with ourselves, we don't keep it to ourselves, we project it. When we're sad, we don't keep it to ourselves, we project it. So all of a sudden, you're that person no one, no one wants to be around because you're always angry or you're always sad or you're always upset or there's always drama. The only people that are attracted to that are the people doing the same thing. Drama attracts drama. Sadness attracts sadness. Unfulfillment, just, it's contagious. 
but so is the other end of the spectrum. Happiness, purpose, that attracts happy people, people with purpose. And listen, happy is a state of mind, but happy is not a consistent state that we're going to be in. We're not always going to be happy. And truly happy people understand that, that you're going to have tough days, rough days, down days. I think we think that happiness is just this place that when we arrive that we're just smiling all the time no matter what happens. Happiness is not 100%. Happiness is in a stage that we get to as often as we can, when we can, but we have to go through trials and tribulations on a daily basis, on a yearly basis. We might be in a stage of our life where things aren't good, but we can still be happy. We can still be positive. When we start moving towards things and start making plans and start working our plan, happiness improves. Our situation may not be any better at the moment, but the fact that we were working on it, the fact that we're moving with purpose, deliberateness, will increase your happiness about it. I might not be pleased where I am now at this certain stage of my life, for some people, depending where you're at, but you can still be overall happy. I'm rebuilding my business. I'm rebuilding the brand. I'm 51 years old. There's times where I'm like pretty, pretty down, but I had to make some changes. I knew those changes would be tough, but they're allowing me to move forward. And there's a lot of great things beginning to happen. There was a lot of great things always around me, but I either couldn't see them or I couldn't get to them because I was stuck in a situation that didn't allow me to mentally, emotionally, bandwidth, financially, time-wise. That's why I had to clear a lot of these things up to allow myself to be able to get to the good things that are around, the things that I want to do, to take a minute and sit back and sit there and say, what do I really want? Where do I really want things to go? And then in order to achieve that, who do I have to become to be able to do that? What standards do I have to set for myself to become the person that's going to be able to create the life that I want? Business, family, social, training, health, physique. When, you, when I spend time and I really started to break it down, I knew I wasn't happy with a lot of things, but I'd lost sight of where it was I was going or I wanted to go. And I had to have conversations with myself. Is what I want at 51 what I wanted at 41 and 31? Some of it was fundamentally absolutely. I just lost sight of it. And some of it's changed because I've seen more of the world. I've seen more of myself through the world. So now I have a much better idea of where I want to be. I have a better idea of clarity, what it looks like. Now I reverse engineering and say, who do I have to be every day to become that person that is capable of creating that life and maintaining that and being happy and being inspired and being inspiring? I want to be motivated, but I also want to motivate others. That's truly part of who I am. I want to help others, but I want to walk the walk at such a high level that I'm proud to share what I've done and how I've done it. That's a lot of pressure, but it's a good pressure because we're under pressure no matter what. But it comes down to setting a higher standard for ourselves and looking for our own approval. Do I feel like I truly made progress today? Am I moving forward? Am I becoming a better man, a better husband, a better father, a better business person, a better athlete? It's my approval I have to seek. It's my approval I have to earn. But I have to work for it. I have to set those standards. And that's what everyone needs to do that wants to improve. Seek your own approval because it's the only one that really matters.
If you truly get to a point where you are happy with yourself and proud of yourself, you will be calmer, happier, more adjusted, able to deal with things more efficiently because you know who you are. And you know you're becoming that person and getting closer to it and getting better at it. What a sense of accomplishment that will be. I can't wait. I'm excited for it. I'm motivated by it. And that's what I have to think about. When I get up sometimes and I'm tired, that's what I have to think about. When I get up sometimes and I'm not motivated, like everyone else, you know, there's times where I get up and I just want to throw it all away, pack it all in and fuck off. That's when I need to think about what I'm doing and what I've accomplished and what I'm accomplishing. I have to reevaluate and go back and what are my standards? Does this fit my new standards? If not, then adjust it. Adjust my behavior. Why am I feeling this way? What's going on? And then go after it. Face it. Deal with it. Setting a higher standard for ourselves, seeking our own approval, is the only approval that matters. That's all I have to say on that for now, guys. Head on over to ironhossgear.com. Use the code word IRONWILL to get 20% off. Some really cool merch over at the site. Uh, check out ironhossgear.com and on Facebook just to see what we're up to. We've got lots of events, a lot of powerlifting stuff, a lot of cool things going on. And as always, guys, be brave. And I'll talk to you guys later.